The absurd. The obsessed. The obscure. Follow us if you dare as we open the files at My Weird Space. There are foolish people who have no respect for their hearing. Jealous people battling a misguided case of height envy. And embarrassed pets who would love to be rid of their owners. It was survival of the fittest and most balanced in Mexico City as brave, though some would say desperate, women popped on their high heels to compete in a high-stepping foot race. And with the prize being a shopping voucher worth 9,000 US dollars, it was serious business. Obviously a little too serious for this girl. Ah, that's one lady who will definitely not be going shopping. The competition had only one strict rule. That being that the participants' heels had to have a required minimum height of 7 centimetres. You know, I can't get that 9,000 US dollar shopping spree prize out of my head. If I'd known it was going to be that much, I might have joined them. Thing is, I doubt if my wife would have let me some of her high heels. No, actually now I think about it, I'm sure she wouldn't. Now that is one happy winner. I'd hate to think how fast she'd run in trainers. Show off. He's a salsa dancer with a difference and a YouTube sensation. Meet Colombian Ronaldo Ojeda, who lost his left leg at birth. But that didn't dim his zest for life, or in particular, his passion for salsa. Despite his disability, the 33-year-old has now become one of the best salsa professional dancers in Colombia. Ronaldo tells us he was the target of cruel jokes and bullying at school, and even after leaving, was discriminated against by employers because of his disability. Hope those stinkers can see him now. Mind you, I don't know why the lights are so low. You'd think this poor guy has enough against him, without having to be able to see in the dark as well. Hot tamale! Great, a story that's firmly up my alley. I just love motorcycles, and these look very cool. Welcome to Virus, the small Italian motorcycle company that makes some of the most exclusive motorcycles in the world, and all by hand. Each bike is designed and assembled in this small factory, according to the client's requests, and with endless options, of course. However, exclusivity comes with a hefty price tag, with the prices ranging from 49 to 79,000 US dollars. Note to self, ask for serious pay rise. Even so, these bikes are so popular the company is having trouble meeting orders. Now, let me see, how can I make this look uh, extremely cool? What is it again that Paris Hilton is always saying? I remember, that's hot. Here in Japan, when it comes to having fun, it's certainly a case of anything goes. And here's the proof, as tens of thousands of Japanese took to the streets in the nation's biggest Halloween street party. Japan's love of quirky festivals and eccentric trends in general may go towards explaining why Halloween has turned from an obscure foreign celebration into this incredibly popular cultural event. Yes, 
choice from little girls and boys in traditional fare to adults in more fanciful outfits, including everything from Japanese ghouls to cartoon characters. Japan's costume-loving masses have undoubtedly embraced this US tradition. Similar extravaganzas are apparently erupting all over town, and Tokyo Disneyland has started celebrating even earlier than theme parks in the United States. Go figure! You remember how I said the story on motorcycles was up my alley? Hmm, well, this one's the opposite. Here in Mexico City, it's preparation time in the lead up to the massive celebration of the Day of the Dead. It's a pre-Hispanic tradition in which families remember their dead and celebrate the continuity of life. Yes, the emphasis on life is the bit I like. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be respectful, but just how all these skulls and scary looking heads could possibly make anyone feel better about their departed loved ones is beyond me. Oh well, at least there are some nice pizza ovens. Sorry, what was that? Oh, apparently they're not pizza ovens. Yes, it's fun of plenty as the people set up their offerings for the departed, which can include photographs, food, candles, and of course, skeletons. Halloween Horror at the Hollywood Museum delivers on its title. They've got sets, props, posters, pictures, and costumes from Hollywood horror films from the last eight decades. The exhibit, fittingly located in the basement of the Hollywood Museum, boasts items that have been collated from movie studios, film fans and of course the museum's own collection. The infamous bust line of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, holds pride of place, as does a poster and bust from the all-time favourite fright film Frankenstein. Now that's something any film buff would love to have in their collection. MGM Universal and the De Laurentiis Company contributed the exhibit's most expansive display. It's the jail cell and corridor from the spine-chilling blockbuster, The Silence of the Lambs. All this reminds me of the good old days when I took my first girlfriend to the movies. I figured that if a horror movie didn't allow me to put my arm around her, nothing would. Now, you may think this story is about the military, or at least a soldier, but think again, it's actually about an athlete, a really silly one. This is a 7,734kg military helicopter that is about to be pulled along the tarmac for 26.3 metres by Lusher. He's the one who's about to have really sore ears. Obviously, the high possibility of pulling his whole face off has not occurred to him, though I bet it has occurred to his wife. Yes, all it takes is a bit of encouragement from the crowd of stupid family members and so-called friends, and some people will try anything. Come on now, enough already! Truly, I have seen many an idiot on my weird space, but Lasher, you sir, take the cake. Here in Cambodia, the Japanese assistance team for small arms management has been actively involved in assisting local authorities to persuade villagers to give up their arms. As you can see, they've been very successful indeed, with close to 28,000 AK-47s and small arms being surrendered since 2003.
now, Cambodian artists have been commissioned to hammer, saw and weld the guns into a public owned sculpture that will symbolise the development and happiness of the Cambodian people. The sculpture will be on display in a park in Battambang, some 300 kilometres from Phnom Penh, and will be in the shape of a naga, or mythological cobra, which is revered as the original ancestor of the Khmer people. From violence to art, that has to be a good thing. At this Robo Development Conference and Expo in California, robots came in all shapes, sizes and prices, and with varying functions and skills. From dinosaurs to humanoids, robots are becoming ever more interactive. Hmm, will I or won't I? The interactive event showcased how robotics are becoming essential to manufacturing, technology and entertainment and gave developers a chance to show off the next generation of their robots. Just imagine robots that can think, talk and even read your facial expressions. This one's cute. Hope he doesn't turn mean and scary though like some of those Hollywood ones have been known to do. Yet yeah, looking closely he actually does seem to have a little glint in his eye. I'd keep an eye on that one. Like other technology, robotics is becoming more affordable and therefore more accessible. So look out, the robotics age is coming even sooner than expected. Germany has entered a new digital age. From now on, a new passport in Germany will consist of an electronic passport containing biometric data. And everyone applying for a passport will need to provide two fingerprints and have their face scanned. Sounds a bit Gattaca-ish, doesn't it? According to the German Ministry, the biometric passports will be a help in the fight against terror. But regardless, they are proving controversial, mainly due to the individual losing control over who holds the electronic data. Still, the German Ministry says the new passports will rule out the possibility of passports being forged and make it easier to track suspected criminals, as no two people can have the same fingerprints. As long as they would provide quicker service and less delays at airports, they can have as many fingerprints and face scans as they want. The people of this small German village are to lose their homes, but incredibly, they've saved their church. A court ruling said their homes must be demolished to make way for an open mine. But the 300 residents were adamant that would not include their church. Luckily, the neighbouring town agreed to provide sanctuary to the 700-year-old building. So off it went on its 12-kilometre journey. Its final destination will be next to the neighbour's church. Gee, it looks a bit like a poor cousin next to that big one though, doesn't it? Oh, that looks like one tough audience. I wouldn't want to be one of those engineers for quids. Just one false move, a big crash and all that love and understanding might just disappear in a puff of smoke. What's that noise? Oh, I know, it's the engineers. They're praying. Now, if there's one thing I really hate, it's ironing. But not these crazy fellas, heck no, they absolutely love it. So much so that they've set out on an extreme ironing tour. Come on, what is that? Ah oh, yes, now I can see some sense in it. Who hasn't been in a rush for work and not noticed until they're on the bus that their shirt is unironed? Those guys could make a killing. 
Is it me or have you noticed that all the iron is on the tour of men? I guess the girls are too smart to waste their precious extreme time on ironing. Look at them, just like a couple of old women hanging around chatting while they share an ironing board. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, after this, you'd certainly have to say they'd be experts. Wonder if they'll keep it up when they get back home. I don't think so. Now, this is a beautiful young woman who has every reason to feel proud as she takes to the catwalk. As not only does she have the honour of modelling such an amazing costume, but also she incredibly helped to design it. The 20-year-old student of a Japanese fashion college said she felt like a million dollars, and no wonder she was clad in no less than 1,515 Austrian mint gold coins. The gold coins were on lease from the Austrian Mint, so understandably security was tight in the design classroom, as both teachers and guards watched over the honoured students like proverbial hawks. And yes, I do believe the Mint was very relieved indeed to have each and every coin accounted for when it was time to give them back. Guess all that security was worth it. We here at My Weird Space are only too familiar with self-titled Guinness Book of Records man Ashrita Furman. Frankly, we think he's getting a little too much attention. Does this man ever take a break? Oh well, I suppose we'd better tell you what he's been up to this time. He's trying to break the record of the amount of milk crates held balanced for 10 seconds on a person's chin, as his previously held record was recently broken by someone else. Ooh, he'd hate that. And why has he chosen one of the world's most famous and recognisable backdrops to his attempt? Because he's special, of course. Jeepers, he must have a seriously strong chin. I'd say that would be a direct result of all that chin wagging he does as he constantly tells the world how fantastic he is. Oh, 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 look out. Uh, well, that's the end of that attempt. Next! Now we're going to show you a Guinness World Record attempt that actually does go off. The makers of Vaseline Soap have produced a 12.5 tonne bar of soap. The bar was unveiled at the Vaseline factory in Durban, South Africa, after months of preparation, drying and carving to make the biggest bar in the world. Can't say that all that gunk that's going into the soap making process looks pretty, but we're quite certain it will smell good. After they add heaps of perfume, that is. The company aims to travel around rural communities with the big soap, demonstrating the importance of using soap to help stem the spread of disease. I guess the advertising benefit of such an endeavour hasn't even entered their heads. Officials estimate that the mammoth bar of soap would last an individual more than 50 years. I'd like to see the shower that could fit that baby into it. <coughs> ah, now finally a story I can sink my teeth into. Well, maybe not. Even I have my boundaries. Yes, it's that time of year again when every man and his dog starts to think that they can eat more pumpkin pie than the next guy. And oddly enough, so do their friends. Go figure. Right, OK, stay calm. Oh, I've done all this before. I just need to remember all those Thanksgivings at Grandma's house. Oh dear, what a tummy. I hope he didn't actually eat his Grandma. 
Come on, guys, just a few seconds left. Go for it, you can do it. Uh, sorry, you've got no hope, mate. I can see a big letter L on your forehead. And there he is, the champion. Oh, yes, sir, you should be extremely proud of yourself. And what do you get for your prize? Another pumpkin pie, you nutter. It's a case of pandemonium here at this Japanese zoo, where these two very cute but ageing lesser pandas have decided to fill their last days in with love, not war. The bizarre behaviour is something that's never been seen in the panda enclosure before, and is certainly causing a stir with both zoo staff and visitors. Ah, please. The public spectacle they're making of themselves is disgusting. The admission-free municipal zoo, however, is not pandering for extra business, as the panda puckers come at no extra charge. Now that's all for today, darling. You're wearing me out. I need a little rest. Oh, come on, sweetie. How about just one more for the road? <laughs> Only in New York would you come across a Halloween costume party for, wait for it, dogs. The event, which was sponsored by an animal magazine, saw dogs arriving dressed in costumes ranging from Superman to the Wizard of Oz to Britney Spears. Bet that dog wasn't wearing much. Hey lady, you actually need to put the doggy down to strut his stuff. It's not about you, sorry. Look at this little poppet, she's terrified. And what on earth has her silly owner tied to her back? Poor thing. And here's another one for the what the heck is that dog wearing category. Finally, an outfit we can recognise. But hey, Granny, you might want to hitch up that nighty. You don't want to come to a slippery end. What? Not more dress-ups? Oh, well, I suppose it's not so bad when people are making themselves look silly instead of their unfortunate dogs. Now that is one extremely fast bear. Looks as though the sunflower is catching up fast, though. Nope, not even a spot of bad sportsmanship can take him down. He's a winning machine. Now that sadly reminds me of a horse I once put money on. All right, I admit it, it does look like a bit of fun and yes, I probably would have a go at it, especially as no one would recognize me in one of those costumes. Hang on, what am I saying? No one recognises me without a costume. You know, now that I look closer at him, I'm not sure that he is a bear. Well, whatever he is, he's a fast one. That's all we have this time, but follow us again if you dare when we open the files at My Weird Space. <laughs>